What's going on everyone? Welcome to the video. Now one of the most frequently asked questions I get is what is a day in the life like for an ATP flight student? And as much as I would love to just grab a camera and film everything I do throughout the day, that's just not really conducive with the training environment or with ATP's policies. So instead, I'm going to make a video just explaining what you can expect throughout a day. Now also, as much as I would love to just give you a clear cut answer that you can expect to be gone 8 to 5 Monday through Friday training, that's not the case either as in every day is unique and every day is different. So I'm going to break it down so you guys can get an understanding of what to expect through a typical day at ATP. Now the way you can break it down is in four main events that you can expect throughout a different each day at ATP. The first event you can expect is obviously your flights. You're here to become a flight student, you're here to become a pilot, so that's the main thing you're going to be doing is flying. I think by the end of the program you'll have around 220 to 250 hours, and that's within a nine month period. So it's a lot of flying. Uh, at most, I think you only do two or three night flights, so one night flight in the private stage and then two night flights in the commercial stage, but all their flying is done during the day, and the reason ATP does that is just because it's a lot safer to fly during the day. That's why they do that, and there's only a a few requirements to actually fly at night to get certain licenses and that's your private and your commercial. But other than that, there is a lot of time spending typically. Well, ATP's policy is you have to fly at least three times a week. Usually though, you're flying around five times a week and you usually only fly once every, once in a day unless you're like really behind in the program or crunched for time, then maybe you'd have to do two flights in a day. But typically it's only once a day and usually around five times a week. Now, what days you fly really just depends on your preference and your instructor's preference. So if you don't want to fly on the weekends and you're able to do that and your instructor's okay with that as well, then you can work that out to where you're only flying Monday through Friday. But you do have to take into account that a lot of times flights get canceled or moved um, due to weather, different things like that. So um, typically it's best just to be open all seven days to be able to fly. Like right now I'm in a situation where my check ride's coming up um, and I've also been delayed a few days just because of weather. So I'm gonna be flying on Saturday and Sunday this weekend. Uh, and then, so the way the flights work pretty much is they're split into four flight blocks. That's what we call them, flight blocks. There's the A, B, C, and D block. And the way the A block works is usually depending on when the sunrise is, but typically an A block is around 7.15 a.m. B block is gonna be around 10 a.m. C block is gonna be around 1 p.m. And then D block is gonna be around three to four p.m. Um, and also that which block you get put in during each day depends on your preferences, your instructor, and the availability of the airplane. So if you're not a morning person and you'd rather fly at 10 a.m. or 1 p.m., then you can work that out with the instructor that that's when you'd prefer to fly. Obviously, that's only pertaining to, you know, if those flights are available, if there's aircrafts available to be flying at the time. You know, if you need to be flying at 7.15, then unfortunately that's just what the, um, that's just what your instructor is going to have to schedule you for. Now the duration of the flight and how long it is is usually dependent on the type of training flight that it is. Typically a normal flight on average will last you about two hours long, um, but if say if you're doing a long cross country flight it could be in the realm of three to four hours. I've even had short flights as short as just an hour long. I had to go do like some takeoff and landing practice really quick and ended up only being about an hour long. So on average though it's about a two Typical training flights are around two hours. Um, now the second event that you can have is your sim time. So ATP is really awesome that they provide sims at I'm pretty sure every location there is. Um, we're very fortunate at Daytona location that we have a full motion Redbird simulator. Um, if you've ever been on my Instagram, you've probably seen it on there a few times. I use it a lot, it's a great tool. I was in there today, my flight got canceled, so I went in there and was just working on some maneuvers, going through the flows of things, getting ready for my check ride coming up. But you use a lot, especially in the instrument stage, you use a, this thing a lot, there's a lot of hours in it. But that is just time that you spend with your instructor, usually about an hour to two hours, just whatever you need to go through, the flows, learning things, and it also saves you a lot of time. Um, that's wasted in the airplane that you can just do in the sim. So if you're going over something for the very first time, instead of ex explaining it for the first time in the airplane, you can just hop in the sim, um, get some hour, get about an hour in there, go over everything, get familiarized with it. So when you get to the plane, it's not brand new to you and your time in the actual plane is utilized a lot more efficiently. But we're also very fortunate at the Daytona location that our, all of our sims are in a separate building and I think we have around five to six sims all together. So we also have the full motion sim and then a couple other ones like CRX and um, I don't know the names of all of them, but there's a few other ones. 
and but that's in a separate building and we all as students we all get a key card and you're able to uh, scan yourself into the building it's open 24 7 so you can go there whenever you want um, they are reserved based off of different time slots so there's it goes by the hour you can pick whatever time slot you want with your instructor so as long as there's not an instructor or a student scheduled for that sim you're more than free to you are free to go in there and use it as much as you want and practice and it's really awesome now the third event that you can have is what we call our ground time so ground time is basically just what you consider classroom time um, typically it's never classroom time or ground is never more than about an hour to two hours long and your instructor will just use this time to go over different topics that need to be talked about or um, touched on for whatever check card you have coming up there can also be used for if you're struggling with a certain part in your knowledge um, say I'm struggling with weather or the sectional chart then I can have my instructor schedule a ground so where we can just spend an hour or two just going specifically over weather specifically over the sectional chart so it's really just classroom time that's all it is um, it's just to make sure that your knowledge is up to where it needs to be since this program is very fast paced a lot of the setting is put on the student so grounds are really used not necessarily as a full on teaching but just to make sure that you, where you are with your knowledge where it needs to be, it's up to par, and that you're progressing along. As well as if you have any deficiencies in your certain knowledge or you're struggling in a certain area, then that's what these grounds are used for. Now, those are actually scheduled by your instructor and something that you have to go to. There are also what we call group grounds, and group grounds is just where a any instructor at your location will schedule one of these whenever he wants to do a ground on a specific topic. So say there's an instructor that wants to do a ground on systems of the Cessna 172. He can schedule that and it'll be in your student extranet for it'll show up for on every student and it'll give you the time, but it's not something that is required or mandatory for it to go. These are just voluntary, so if you want to go, you can go and usually that's more of a group setting, so you'll have like anywhere from five to fifteen students show up and as a group you learn about the systems and it can talk about it and they're actually very beneficial it really helps a lot because you have a lot of input a lot of different students and they'll be, usually be students from all different stages of the program that'll come to these but they're by no means mandatory or necessary to go to it's just something that is there to help you out and just an additional uh, tool to use now the fourth um, event that you can have at ATP is not necessarily an event, it's not something that's mandatory, but it is something that needs to be touched on because it's something that takes the most time out of your day, and that is the studying. Obviously, like I mentioned, ATP is a very fast-paced program, it's only nine months, and a lot of the responsibility is put on the student to keep up with the studying, to keep up with the knowledge, and that is where self-study comes into play. And that is also why this program is not necessarily for everybody. And I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just that it is a very rigorous program. And you do have to be very self-motivated to keep up with that, to be able to sit down for a couple hours and study every single day. And I found that most of the time, more than your flying, more than your grounds or your sims, is spent going home or in the classroom studying on your own learning things, watching videos, reading your books, um, and even when you're not studying for the knowledge part, you're studying for a written test. So there's always time to be studying, and when I'm not at the training center, I go home and I'm studying at home. Um, but it is great that ATP has different classrooms that you're able to study in, so if you want to stick around the ATP location, you're more than welcome to do that and study there, be with other students to study, and then you're also able to go home or go wherever you want and study. So that's typically what the four main events that you can see throughout a day are. Now what your day-to-day -day is, it really just varies, so if you need a sim and a flight in one day, you can have that scheduled, you can have all three scheduled in one day. So I've had days as short as a 7.15 flight that lasts for two hours, come back from the flight, debrief, and I'm done by about 10, 10.30, and then I'm free for the rest of the day. So I can go home, study, I can stick around and uh, study at the ATP location, I can do whatever I want. But then there's also other days where I'm going from like 7 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon so it really just depends it depends on the necessity of the training that needs to be done where you're at in the stage how much time you have to work with uh, but that's typically what a day-to-day -day looks like now a lot of one of the main questions I get as well is do you have time to work and I've mentioned this previously in a few other videos that um, I would work part-time on the side with the program obviously due to the COVID-19 situation I'm not currently working on the side I'm just strictly training unfortunately but when everything was normal, I was working on the side part-time as a server. Now, you will read a lot on the forums that you're not, either you're not supposed to or you have no time to work on the side. 
And I understand where that is coming from and where the logic of that is coming from, but it's not necessarily true. You do have a little bit of time on the side to have a job. It's just by no means are you able to hold a full-time job while also doing ATP. If you're going to join ATP, then basically everything is to be put on hold for the next nine months, and this has to be your main focus. Going to ATP is almost like a full-time job in itself, and this has to be the main focus, your main priority. However, there's a little bit of time on the side every once in a while. The only reason I was able to work on the side was because the place that I worked at had a lot of employees, and so I was able to just be on a pickup-only basis, which means that I was, wasn't scheduled week to week. I was, if I was able to work, say, on Saturday at night, and there was a shift available, I could, Saturday morning, I could pick that shift up, and now I had a shift for that Saturday night. That was really the only way I was able to do that. And typically, at most, I, I didn't work more than twice a week. So I would say you are able to have a job. It's just very limited, and there's still not that much time for it. And at most, you wouldn't be able to have more than a part-time job. However, I would say if you don't have to work, don't work. It's just time that was taken out that I could have been, that I could have used studying or doing other things and so if you're able to if you're financially in a position where you're not you don't need to work then i would definitely suggest put that on the back burner and just focus on your training but it's definitely possible to hold a job while at atp it's just not very practical if that makes sense but that's what a typical day looks like that's what you can expect throughout the program well i hope this give you guys a good insight on what a typical day looks like for an atp student what you can expect the different events that you can have throughout the day and what a typical week looks like um if you like this video leave a thumbs up leave a comment down below what you thought if i missed anything put a comment down below or if you want me to hit a topic on something let me know as well make sure you hit that subscribe button and i'll see you in the next video